trial so, version. Trial version able to bring her on board when you're live. Trial version. I was trial live. Version. Trial version. And she is on board, but I can't. Uh, hear, trial uh, version. It says. If you, everybody else can hear me, but I cannot trial version. Hear her or, and there's a background that keeps saying trial version, trial, trial version. version. What is that? And who and how? Trial version. Trial version. So I am going to trial version. try this again. Hang trial on, version. be patient with me. Oh, for, for you, you don't hear it. You have to Trial be version. Okay, you're in StreamYard. Hmm. Trial version. Trial version. Let me try and log in again. It says one more time. Trial version. Trial version. Trial version. Going to the account. Settings. Trial version. Trial version. Trial version. All right, I'm going to, so sorry, folks, I'm going to have to uh, log out of this one. And where's the login code? Give me a second. I have a login code that I have to get into for here. And... Uh, It's coming some from somewhere. Here we go. Okay, login code. What is the code? One, four, three. Let's see if this works. All right, thank God. Now, Lucia, if you could uh, take this uh, login, this, this stream yard, and just click on that. We're going to be a little bit delayed, folks, and I apologize for that. Mm. I'm also going to add in this so that we are... Okay. So it changes. And we are live also on Facebook now. And live on this. And let me now check. Lucia, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I can hear you. Perfect. That was it. Logging in and out. There was something wrong with all of it. It's not a trial version. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let me let me send you to my headphones again one more time. Uh, can Will you hear you me now? To wear the earphones. Uh, so that you don't get feedback. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Absolutely. Wow. What was that? Holy moly. So sorry. That that took uh, uh, literally 10 minutes of our time. And I, and again, I'm not going to play the intro music or anything like that because that's going to be a waste of time. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> and I, I, I'm going to make it short this time. Uh, welcome to the show. Thank you, Mel. Uh, that, was, that was you observing Mel Gill in a panic. <laughs> what the hell happened? We don't know. Uh, regardless, I'm so glad you're here to share your knowledge and your wisdom. Everybody enjoyed you the last time. 
and uh, and they would love to hear more wisdom about suggestopedia, suggestology. Uh, maybe uh, I could ask you to introduce yourself again for the new mm -hmm. people listening, and uh, and maybe we can be uh, 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 a little bit more cognizant about what suggestopedia is all about, and then I'll share what other laws exist, you know, mm -hmm. that I know of in in this thing. Yeah. Okay. 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 I am Lucia Carla Zornig. I am a pedagogue, NLP trainer. Uh, um, access bars practitioner, constellator, therapist, and mother, and many other things, as everybody here. And for the past 15 years, I have been teaching through Lozanov Method. I call it Lozanov Method because this is the way it is in my certificate. I was trained by Professor Lozanov. And, but the name is Suggestopedia, right? And I have been teaching English as a second yes, language. Yes, I have been teaching through of methods. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That's me. Echo. Just putting this on. And uh, it's such an experience, you know, because Suggestopedia nowadays is my way of living. This is the way I live. And that's why it's so important for you folks to understand the laws of Suggestopedia, the laws of teaching. And why the met, and then you you will understand why the method is so effective, and what is and why Professor Lozanov is so special too. So this is why I'm here today. I I would like to thank you, Mel, for this opportunity. We have been thank in contact you. for many years, and. This year, I'm taking a big step, entering the online world with the Lozanov Method training. And I'm adapting to all this technology, you know, it's difficult for me too. But I'm so happy with the results that I'm having. Yeah, and we're... I have it a lot because it's a method of love, touch, no verbal, and to enter internet, was a great challenge for me, but the results are still the same because I think that, like Professor Lozanov said to me once, from the moment you believe, the other person starts learning. Mm -hmm. so, it's doesn't matter uh, if it's online or not. Yeah, I, I, I wonder sometimes if he was alive, how he would cope with all of this technology and, and and whether or not he would be like us, a little bit old school, uh, uh -huh. we'd rather sit. We'd rather sit in a quiet classroom with a fewer number of people, not so many. Uh, and it's not about money at that point. It's about passing on the learning and the teaching, and so everyone benefits from that. Yeah. I I don't I don't work with lots of people. My maximum number of clients nowadays is twelve. Because yeah. I have people from different levels, you know, of English. And each one has a different need. So some people are shy. Some people are perfectionists. Some people have studied many, many years in, in their lives and they can't flow. Some people have a little knowledge, have little knowledge about English and they want to, to take a big step ahead, right? So Forward, yeah. I have my, my public is very diverse. So yeah. I, I I I can't work with more than twelve people. If I want well, to attend, yeah. uh, if I want to help with their needs, right? Right, individually, right. Individually, individually. That's that's where I I I think I I veered off the trap the the path. Uh, I used to teach smaller classes. And it got bigger and bigger and bigger, and soon it became unwieldy. And soon it was about the money because you had to pay for the hotel room or the the venue. Then you have to pay for the assistants. Then you have to pay for da 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 da. But in a small class, everything is yours, and you you begin this whole thing. That's why I think I enjoyed being on uh, news radio uh, in Singapore nine three eight. I was on from nineteen ninety nine to 2007 
uh, that's almost seven years of, of broadcasting, seven plus years of broadcasting uh, this Uncommon Sense program for free. So it was intimate, but yet not so intimate because it, it went out into the whole world. And at one point, I think we had a million and a half people listening. But we never, what was the term they used today? We never monetized that opportunity. Mm -hmm. It was not about the money. It was about mental health and people you know, staying healthy mentally, emotionally, and relationships uh, staying longer. But relationships are a big part of Suggestopedia, aren't they? Yeah. You know, the relationship between the student and the teacher. Can you tell us more about that? And then maybe lead into what the seven laws of a teacher, uh, of teaching that a teacher should hold sacred. Yeah, uh, Professor. According according to Professor Lozanov, the result, seventy uh, percent of the result is the teacher, and this is a big responsibility, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because I believe that I am fifty percent and the student is fifty percent, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, according to Professor Lozanov, seventy percent is the the teacher. But nowadays, uh, uh, not that I, I agree with this, but I feel that the teacher plays a, a very, very important role in this mm. game, you know? Very important role. How so? How? 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 Yeah, how? Uh, like in, yeah, in what because, way? Yeah, like, uh, you have to be open enough to understand what the other person really needs so you can you can help the person exact on that way you know because it's not a general teaching you're not teaching grammar mm -hmm. i understand that english is a consequence of the process it's a whole process right when you learn a second language you have to learn how to articulate you have to learn how to think different you have to learn how to breathe your voice is different, your posture is different. Mm -hmm. uh, and plus, you have to be yeah. aware that many changes will happen here because you're mm -hmm. making a whole bunch of new connections, you know? Right. And of course, English will be a consequence because you're right. flexibilizing yourself. True. Uh, that's one of the principles of NLP, since you said you're an NLP uh, trainer, trainer as well, um, that uh, the person with the most flexibility is the person with the most power. But uh, th this is what I see in the classroom. Sometimes the person has little English, but mm -hmm. the person sings, plays, you know, it's always like a sponge paying attention and alert to everything yeah, yeah, and yeah, not yeah. afraid of making mistakes and just having fun. When yeah. you just have fun, the thing flows. Yeah, yeah. So in your yeah. experience so far, uh, what exactly has been uh, the key to a successful student adaptation of a language or to adopt a language successful uh, for, to make a, a student more successful they need to be a little bit more what flexible flexible, flexible. okay yes yes yeah, it's a whole process of uh, giving up limitations too right Believe. and what is what is the teacher's role in making the student more flexible. How can the t uh, a normal teacher do that? A normal teacher, I don't know what you say by normal teacher. What I do, it's like, I, I really love what I do. I really love okay. what I do. And, I, and when I'm teaching, I am 100% there for them. And I think that this opens the field in a way. I don't know if people understand what I mean by the field. I can explain maybe. Uh, this opens the field in a way that knowledge becomes an exchange, you know? Mm -hmm. A two-way street. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if, if we explain through the laws, makes the whole sense. 
makes the whole sense because uh, the laws they it's a step by step what really happens with us right in the when we we study the laws mm -hmm. okay so should i start with the laws of uh, teaching yeah that'd be great okay the first law of teaching is love mm. love in a way of not judging of accepting the other person exactly the way the other person is so for me when the person comes to me i don't know if the person is a uh, perfectionist or shy or for me it doesn't matter if the person is there it's because i have something that she needs or he needs right mm -hmm. and when you judge the person it's it's more honest for you to say sorry i can't help you find another teacher then let that person stay mm -hmm. because i know it's difficult not to judge because this is a natural for the human being but instead of judging be curious about it right when when the person comes to me i say wow what am i going to learn with this person mm -hmm. you know I, for me this is the process what am i going to learn with this per person and then i do my job and i love so much the job that i do that this exchange happens and when Professor Lozanov talks about uh, judging, uh, no, not judging. I, I just, I, I have some notes here because it's a lot of information. So for Lozanov, the law of love is translated by respect, generosity, humbleness, patient, patience, and trust. And none of these are feelings and, and yes, behaviors, right? So the way you act towards the other person. I see. Once a student came to me and he said, ah, my English is not so bad, but I would like to improve my pronunciation. Mm -hmm. and then I said, okay, we start on Monday. You come to class, we will be here. And he had a, a walking, I don't know how to say the, the equipment he used to, a walker. A walker, yes. yes. A yeah. walker, a walker, a uh, hearing aid. Hearing aid, yeah. A hearing aid, and he was a snuffler. A snuffler? A snuffler. He ain't speak like man. Oh, you know? okay. Snuffler. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It, it yeah. sounds like an elephant from a childhood story. Have you seen the snuffler who's pink in color? But anyway, oh. yeah, mine went in a different direction, yes. And, you know, so, talk a little bit. He'll, he'll learn French a lot better, though. Yeah, anyway, it's so imagine. And then, and then I, I haven't thought about it. Mm -hmm. Because if I thought about it, like, how is he going to improve his pronunciation with so many limitations, right? That right. limitation would be mine. And then I thought, if he came here, it's because he has the resources for it. Right. right. So I hope. My... Yeah. Yes. And his strategy was fantastic because he was like, uh, every time I was speaking, he was repeating it. Very right. In a low volume, yeah. speaking and articulating. Yeah, with his mouth. Yeah. And this was his dream, and he was happy. So who am I to say, oh, he's a snuffler, or he had a hearing? Makes no difference. The limitation would be mine, right? Right. You create habits at some point. In fact, a lot yeah. of what you you are saying is is uh, was written in 1884. I don't know if you know that, but we'll we'll, we'll come to that in a minute. That's old educational models that are still carried over, but. This is exciting. Continue, please. I'm so sorry. Uh, there is an exercise that I that I always tell people when you have a, a difficulty with a person, right? Of relationship, 
and you judge, judge, judge all the time. You just, it's a very simple but deep exercise. You close your eyes, you imagine the person in front of you, and you have to find three, three qualities, real qualities of that person, only three. And you can only open your eyes after you find the three qualities. And this makes such a big change, you know, because when when you start talking about the person, complaining about the person, that 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 you it comes to you like, but the person is this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. Right. Switches, you know. And and this is a, a simple and deep technique to yeah. not judge. But also at the same time, it shows you when you are judgmental also yes. because it doesn't it may not be this may be your uh predisposed way of looking at people or the bias that you have and the lenses through which you see certain people and so all of that matter as well so it's very difficult uh some people said hello lawrence buckley from canada says hello, hello. mel and lucia ting malawan from uh, uh thailand says hello you look so pretty today uh, you, 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 she's talking about you, not me. Uh, yeah, Joyce, Lynn from, <laughs> Joyce Lynn from Scotland says hello. And Chris Vacha just joined us, says good day, Mel and Lucia. Sorry, did I miss much? Kindly update if possible. No, you didn't miss much because uh, you can always play it back again when this uh, program ends. We had technical difficulties for the first 10 minutes of this show, and I don't know why they said it. Trial version, trial. I had to. You gave me a very good suggestion to to re-log in, and I logged out, logged in, and worked. So that was very cool. And so, yes, uh, continue on this. This is very, very interesting. The so teacher good. needs to be non-judgmental. Non-judgmental. And this, for me, this is not a problem because, and uh, I believe that. Uh, I don't know if you feel this way, Mel, but when we work with people, and especially therapy, uh, the method is a kind of therapy too, but especially therapy, sometimes, uh, sometimes, no, you usually start to feel what the other person feels, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's so difficult for the person. And I believe everyone has a pain, a deep pain back there, you know, hidden there. So if, if we judge another person, we have no idea what's going on in there, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And after some years working with therapy, and especially more after access bars that you touch the person's head and you want the points and everything, you get so sensitive about other person's feelings, you know, the emotions and everything, sadness, goodness, and well, I don't know if I can explain this in words, but you know, before you judge, be a hundred percent sure that you know what is going on inside the other person. Sure, and I also just, be a, be a hundred percent sure that uh, you are uh, beyond judgment yourself. No, it's difficult for me to Mel. Very difficult because there are people that I have difficulty to deal with. Who likes a mother-in-law, for example? <laughs> it's a joke. Yeah. It's a joke. I, wow, she's I, and she's listening to I this have, program. I have great mother-in-laws, right? Oh, okay, good. So that's a good. That's a good save. Yes. Oh, Otherwise, tomorrow joke. is going to be hell for you. Just to let you. Know. <laughs> <laughs> and then I close my eyes and I say, "Oh, but she's so nice." Her cake is so delicious, and <laughs> so so you're actually looking for silver linings in any dark cloud. You're the positive one, or yeah, if, you, if no one can, yeah, I if no one can to... can be positive, you find the positives, right? Yeah, you know, Mel. Once uh, I, I talked about this a little bit last conversation that we had, 
the little boy who could draw mangas and mm -hmm. he couldn't read and write. And once his mother was in a school meeting and the teacher was saying horrible things about her son. And then she was desperate. She was sending me a WhatsApp and she said, she said that my son shouldn't be here because he, he is not intelligent enough, not to say dumb, right? And, mm -hmm. da, 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 and, the, and then I said, Carla, her name is Carla too. My name is Lucia Carla, Carla. I said, Carla, ask her, tell her to tell three qualities about your son. You, you don't want to know the rest. You just want to hear three qualities about your son. Ask her now. Make her stop talking and ask her now. And then after she didn't reply me. And after I called her, and then she said that when she asked the coordinator, the teacher, the teacher said, sorry, I have nothing good to say about your son. Wow. And then I asked Carla, and didn't you kill that lady? <laughs> right. So how can a child like this develop in a school with this kind of judgment, you know? Yeah, very difficult. Yes. And teacher she, she took te him out of the school. Yeah, teacher expectations play a huge role. Uh, there were studies done in Boston University on sets of teachers. The, a classic experiment, and you can look it up on Google as well, uh, where a teacher was told ahead of time that her entire class, they did a study and they found the result of the study was that uh, lighter eyed, uh, children with lighter eyes were more intelligent than children with darker eyes. Mm -hmm. And so the teacher started to focus more on the lighter eyed students and more or less completely ignored the darker eyed students because it would be a waste of time. And she thought her energies were best suited to that and she started to do that and this went on for about a week and then the experimenter came back and said i'm so sorry we mixed up your classroom with the other classroom that we did the study we found that darker eyed students were more intelligent than the lighter eyed students and you can expect you know well, what happened was the expectations of the teacher was such that she didn't expect much at that point from the lighter eyed students and of course she expected a lot more and drove a lot more the darker eyed students so teacher expectation is a huge component of education and if you have a teacher that's brilliant and marvelous and loves students and sees potential but not what currently is there and this applies not just in schools and universities but in trainings any kind of training you know out there a corporate training uh, 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 soft skills training, uh, even the hard skills training. When you expect nothing but the best from your students, you you are met. Your expectations are met. But if you're the kind of person that's had too much le teaching, too much, um, you know, you've done this for so many years, you're tired in body, mind, and spirit, it's going to show. And the classroom is not only going to be hell, it's going to be boring as, you know, we say yeah. AF, but boring is, you know, uh -huh. as you know, <laughs> and you just don't want to be there and they don't want to be there. So let's continue talking about the other laws because they may uh, help us they in that regard. They are all connected, right? They're all connected, all, of course. Uh, all, always see the first law, the second law as a consequence of the ones on the top, yes, right? Yes, always, yes. Yes, so the second law is freedom. Uh -huh. freedom and it's a consequence because if you're not being judged right yes you are free to express yourself and you are not worried about right or wrong you can sure. be yourself it's and a, also the teacher is free to do her best too so the exchange flows and the classroom becomes the safest place to make mistakes Yes. Because the teachers are not going to reprimand them. They're not going to say, what the hell, you didn't study. They're just going to say, uh, you know, interesting thought. It's, 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 I don't know if you've heard that joke uh, where um, uh, the, the teacher was asking the students, right? And he picked up Tommy 
from the class and said, Tommy, there are three women eating ice cream. Uh, no, sorry. Uh, there are three birds on, on a wire, right? Mm -hmm. And um, if I were to shoot one, how many is left? And Tommy says, mm, if I shoot one, there'll be nothing left. The teacher said, wrong. Uh, there will be zero left. But why do you say, uh, sorry, there will be two left. And and Tommy, tell me why you think there will be zero. Well, because if I shoot one, the others will be scared and they'll fly away. There will be nothing left. It says, your answer is wrong, but I like your thinking. Well, Tommy was very upset. So he says, teacher, there were three women sitting on a bench eating ice cream. One was licking it from the bottom to the top. One was biting it from the top. And one was chewing it down the middle. Which one is, which one is married? And the teacher said, the, the one licking it from the bottom to the top. No. He says, no, you're wrong. It's the one wedding, wearing the wedding ring. But I like your thinking. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what you mean, right? <laughs> More or less. Oh, what says here, freedom allows the learner to hear the inner voice to find their best way into the reserves of mind. mind. So what Professor Lozanov calls the reserves of mind is what we have inside, we already know, and we don't know that we know. Yes, right? he this, wrote a book these about this. are the reserves about, uh, of the mind. You wrote he a wrote, book? A book? It, it's called Reservopedia. Reservopedia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this freedom, if you're free, of course, right? You can access everything you... I I have an exercise that I de I've developed, Mel, that mm -hmm. I create uh, first night of class. I We create a box, a magic mm -hmm. box. Mm -hmm. And this in this magic box, you put everything you have had contact in English from four months of uh, uh, intrauterine, mm -hmm. because four months, when you are inside the belly, four months, you are already hearing, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So everything you have had contact in English goes to this box, this magic box. Mm -hmm. So it's nice, because then it's like, uh, things that the reserves of mind right it's just a way of creating a physical space for the reserves of mind mind uh professor lozanov had suggested that the um these reserves of mind were unlimited and that the potential of everyone is also unlimited as a consequence there is nothing and you cannot uh, absorb or create there is no skill you cannot display and master there is nothing that's beyond your grasp uh, because of the unlimited nature of the unconscious mind he was very we're very careful to not use subconscious mind because the connotation of uh, hypnosis and uh, uh -huh. waking hypnotic trances he, he, he want to keep away from all of that because that's what the bulgarian government were giving down on him about that it was all hypnosis and that's what you were doing. But when you take a look at teaching trances, teaching trances are hypnotic trances. When you, when the teacher enchants the classroom, you bring enchantment in. They're in a different world. They're different personalities. They are allowed to be free. Not The whole world is a different place. And here for the hour or two hours they're with you, you see, yeah, they are, they're with the magician who's <laughs> or, or, or an enchantress who is making the learning so exciting and so fun. And that's not how everything else is. I have some friends in um, Varna who began a mathematics study center using Suggestopedia. So they're teaching mathematics through Suggestopedia as well. Uh, she's developing that with her husband. Um, some people that I know uh, in Sofia, I think Galia, was running a center and several different centers. And these people are doing good work in other areas. And in where I live in Varna, Bulgaria, there is a Little Prince school. 
from kindergarten all the way up to uh, grade 12. Suggestopedia wow. is the method of teaching of choice. And these oh, students, nice. well, they, they pay a hell of a lot, but you know, it's a private school, oh. but, but they are different from all the students that you have in public school, which is again, the teachers. Yes. Here says that when the teacher the teacher feels free and confident to teach, his state of fullness is reflected to the students through the peripheral peripheral perceptions. So Professor Lozanov talks a lot about peripheral perceptions, and people think only about banners and flashcards and. So so on it goes way beyond that mm -hmm. no, and yeah. once i was uh, having a, a a little training in a school with some teachers and i talked about that and i said i know it's difficult you know and uh, sometimes you have uh, someone sick in your family sometimes you are having a relationship problem in your marriage whatever you have many bills to pay and you don't have the money to pay but from the moment you enter the classroom, you have to take a deep breath and then you have to leave this outside. Because yeah. if you bring this inside, your, your class will be horrible. Mm -hmm. And everybody feels, you don't have to say a word, but everybody feels this. It's impossible not, right? Right you have to dissociate and let everything out and a good way of doing i know i know it might sound difficult right but a good way of knowing this is before you enter the door you ask yourself why am i here this is mm -hmm. what i do because i have many problems in my life like everybody else mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. why am i here okay because this is what i love to do okay so now you enter and you do your best uh, when, when I was sick, before the transplant, I was really sick and I have never been to a dialysis machine. And uh, sometimes I had classrooms at night and sometimes I would throw up all afternoon because I was extremely intoxicated, right? My kidneys didn't work. Mm -hmm. And then my mom, my mom is not here yet. Oh, interesting. And then my mom said, tonight you're not teaching. It, like, it was like about uh, maybe 20, 30 days before the transplant. She said, no, you're not teaching. You're not going anywhere. I said, yes, I am. Because they're waiting for me there. And then she said, look at you. You are there in the bathroom, down on the floor. How can you teach this way? I said, well, they're waiting for me and I'm going there. So I arrived there and there was no throwing up, no sickness. I was looking awful. But I finished that group on a Friday. I translated a workshop Saturday and Sunday all day. And on Wednesday, I went to, to have the first kid, I went to the hospital to have the first kidney removed because they were too giant and there was no space to put my mom's kidney. So first I had to remove one of them. Mm. And this student, one student, he said, on the last day of classroom, he said, I'm so happy, teacher, that you are here with us tonight <laughs> because some nights you arrived here and I didn't believe that you could make it and you always made it. So this is what I say, you know, what's your purpose? What, what do you have inside you bigger than a, a kidney failure, bigger than a, no money for paying that bill or a fight with a husband or a wife, you know? If you are there, if this is your purpose, you go forward. And then my mom passed by <laughs> the door <laughs> to check, you know, and she said, it's unbelievable, unbelievable, unbelievable. And after transplant, sometimes we get some bacteria 
and they are really bad on us because my immune system is very low. Mm -hmm. And once I was with a fever, 39 Celsius fever. And I was feeling horrible. And then I gave them a game to play in pairs. And I was assisting them with the game because I couldn't stand up and talk too much. After the class finished, I drove to the hospital. I was with a bladder infection. And nobody knew that I was with a 39 fever. Wow. So if you have the purpose inside you, and this is what you want to do for the rest of your life, and this is this must be bigger, you know? Mm -hmm. It must be bigger. It is a reason for you to be here, to be there. You chose your profession. You chose to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. Here in Brazil, this is very polemic because teachers uh, for the public school system, they get little money, you know, Mel. Little money yeah, yeah. for teaching. I can imagine. This is very polemic. Uh, everywhere in the world. Uh, Bulgaria, even less. How they I survive, I don't know. Uh, Singapore, you, well, I cannot say much, but because I'm, it's I'm a here. Shame. Yeah. It's a shame, but it is a choice at the same time. So you, cho you, you, cho you chose to be there, right? You made a choice. Nor so, Norway. But it, it's not a student's fault. Norway, uh, Belgium, uh, Finland, and one or two other countries have made teacher salaries so high that the teachers don't have to think anymore about their financial issues. And in fact, they don't have so many financial issues. Their only focus is to teach and train the leaders of the future, the leaders of the country in the best way possible. Here, the rest of the world, sorry, uh, are not so enlightened uh, uh, governments where, uh, and, and the word government is govan-mente, which means to control the mind. And yeah. it, 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 it makes you think a little bit more about what is actually at work here. And I'm not a politician and I don't get involved in politics, but I think being standing up for the underdog, the teachers who are the ones given the most responsibility is very, very tough. And even if we teach them, I tried to teach them a lot of, I actually, I created about 14. I added to Professor Lozano seven laws of suggestopedia by adding more up to 14 actually. I combined also the ancient research uh, I don't know if you know this, but a lot of the seven laws came about maybe um, so many years ago uh, when classical education, are you familiar with John Milton Gregory? Uh, uh, he, he created in 18, in the 1880s, 1890s, the very mm -hmm. simple, simplified laws. Uh, example, I'll give you one. Uh, a teacher has to, law number one, number two, number three, I'm not sure. It says the teacher has got to know the material inside out. So when seeking a, a, a teacher in the classical school, in the old classical school, um, when you're seeking a teacher, you have to ensure that your child's math teacher is, is actually degreed in math, knows his stuff or is a genius in some form, or the music teacher is gifted somehow in the theory of, uh, professional experience as a musician, so on and so forth, and and you and even if you're homeschooling, you got to find a group or, or share um, this burden of teaching with people who are actually skilled in that particular thing that's being taught. So teach what you're good at is number one, and let others trade off and and find the ones that are not so good at it. Uh, another thing, another law is that you uh, the students have to be interested in the subject. Or the lesson being taught and how can you encourage your child to become an active learner very simple suggestopedia right have them read ahead uh, get them ready to openly discuss uh, let them play roles uh, another way would be maybe to introduce the topic to uh, even ask the child questions that might get him thinking 
uh, Socratic form of things uh, of teaching where you form groups out in the open not in the class and all of that make them more curious make them want to ask more questions it may take some time but you develop these habits and uh, and so on and so forth if you are familiar with all of this you will recognize that there's a lot of things that we can do to enhance a classroom miracle experience uh, and, and the classroom is miraculous and the teacher plays a big part so in my master trainer programs which is a six-day program actually uh, I teach people to become literally master trainers on stage uh, but but this is what I tell them when you go on stage in front of people the show begins doesn't matter your life doesn't matter you had a big fight with your uh, your wife or somebody or somebody else's wife it makes no difference the point is in that classroom you are the showman and these are your audience and they have paid for a exciting show so in most of my classrooms they're laughing all the way while they are learning and they don't know why they're learning so quickly and want to come back because you make them thirsty for that and and one or two of them since 1991 one or two of them have come back to me and said you know if you had been my high school teacher i would be a different person today For sure. <laughs> yeah i said if i had been your high school teacher i would be much poorer today <laughs> <laughs> there is a comment there let's check uh, as i am listening this discourse is mainly for teaching techniques to primary secondary schools and i'm on the right thinking and does it apply to public education for adults for any kind, right? Yes. Of teaching. Yes, any kind of teaching. I work with adults. I don't work with children anymore, unfortunately, yet, because I'm thinking about that. It's a dream that I have to. Mine's different. I work I work with children that look like adults. <laughs> yeah, they, they yes. <laughs> yes. They're so intelligent, so intelligent. And yeah. you know, sometimes uh, when I started working with uh, uh, access bars, what was interesting that like 70% of my clients, clients were children from hmm. 4 to 11. And they are extremely judgmental, extremely hmm. judgmental. Children. Say, oh, that girl, she is a... And you, you look and like, wow but but that's not judgmental that's being truthful I no mean they, because they don't accept the other the other partners or colleagues as they are you know they are like oh everything is a problem and they come yeah what what i think is behind that that and the parents are together right because i don't i don't stay with the child alone the parents are there and the parents are like this Parents don't know what to do. Parents right, don't know. What right, right. And and they're looking to you and with this fear and longing in the eyes, please help me take the child. You, know? <laughs> uh, you um, should write a book. You should write a book um, uh, about how to be how to be a better parent so that people the children are primed to want to learn more and be more curious. Uh, because, like I said before in the last lesson, there is no such thing as learning disabilities. There are teaching disabilities. And that we need to e equip teachers more with more skills, more abilities, more tools, more everything. And that's, that's something I'm actually going to be launching next year at some point. A, a site which, where teachers can come to and upgrade themselves for nothing, for, for literally nothing. I mean, a, a dollar, a dollar a year, what the hell. You know, I think everyone can afford that, and that should be more useful as well. Um, we are in conversation with Lucia Carla Zornig. She's from Brazil. She's a teacher of Suggestology, Suggestopedia. She's also an NLP uh, coach, teacher, and uh, practitioner. So uh, she's telling us today about Suggestopedia, Suggestology, and uh, the seven laws of teaching. And we are on law number? Finishing number two. 
uh, you... just one comment here jo uh, professor lozanov lozanov calls joyful freedom uh -huh. uh, because this principle presupposes a physical relaxation and a non-tense concentration so this is a uh, uh, in this is what he calls psico relaxamento concentrativo let me translate this do you know what i'm talking about to translate is difficult psico relaxamento psycho relaxing concentration yeah? uh -huh. okay is this a name i i'm waiting for you it's to a, give me more a, clues it's a, it's a it's a term that professor lozanov says i, I will explain it's better because you get in a state that you are total alert and focused, and at the same time, you are relaxed, no tension. É psico relaxamento concentrativo, the name in Portuguese. And this, uh, he, this happens usually when the child is playing on playground. If you remember, you play on the playground during the break at school. You come to the classroom with all that energy, you know, wow. And then the teacher says, okay, now stop. Everybody quiet. And she cuts the magic, you know, because the child comes with the perfect state for learning. Relaxed, focused, creative, because this is what play right play brings yes. us that's why we sing uh, we sing children's songs we dance we we listen to classic music because the classic music also brings this state right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so joyful freedom having fun joyful freedom it's is playfulness ah, the name is yeah. here in english concentrative Concentrative, concentrative psycho relaxation, the name in English translated. Okay. Name, a, bit, a, bit, a, a, bit, a bit convoluted. Uh, relaxed concentration. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Crazy, right? Crazy. Yeah, yeah. But this is what I do. Uh, I had a classroom. Hello, yeah. Loja. I had a classroom last week online. And mm -hmm. then we had that uh, song, B-I-N-G-O. I don't know if you know. There was yes. a farmer had a dog, B-I-N-G-O, right? And the and first Bingo one we clapped. Uh, yes. And then I-N-G-O, N-G-O, right? Yes. And, and then I, I took a frying pan and a wood spoon, right? And I was beating. And then suddenly I said, okay, the last time we will bark and make mm -hmm. noise. Yes. And then I asked a uh, I student said, "Teacher, I'm having so much fun beating the the, the frying pan, yes, <laughs> and barking with you. This is crazy, and I love it. And this okay. kind of thing makes the same state, you know. After this, if you close your eyes after an exer exercise, exercise yes. like this, yes. you uh -huh. close your eyes." And your whole body is like, wah, wah. and I feel here inside my brain like I was, like I'm getting a massage, you know. Uh -huh. so this is why I use B I N G O, head and shoulder, knees and toes, and loop to loo, and the wheels on the bus, and so on, with adults. Yeah. I with used adults. to do that because with my you with get my kids. This exact stage. Yeah. State. I used exactly. I used to I used to do it with my kids a lot as well when they're growing up. It made um, learning a lot of fun. It, it's why uh, students in China, uh, I think, when one of the Beatles had visited uh, uh, China and and uh, some, I think it was near Chengdu, which is the western end of China, and. Uh, uh, Paul McCartney came into one of the classes. He was being nice and da da da. And here the students were all gathered together to sing, and a, 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 an English song for him. We all live in a yellow submarine. 
da, 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 da. and they all went like that, like that, like that. And when he bent down to ask them, do you know what that means? No, no idea. What does that? They don't speak <laughs> English, but they knew the words. They knew how to say it. And that's why the alphabet is always followed by the song. And uh -huh. you, you, ex except in America, except in, well, maybe in the South, they use the song still, but um, in other parts, you know, uh, except the White House may need the song as well. But when people say the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, da, 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 and every country in the world will be able to say the, the English alphabet because of the song. And mm -hmm. that's how people think. And so if you associate this relaxed concentration, which is usually done with music, to the brain, and that, therefore, uh, we introduce the aspects of certain parts of Baroque music. Oh, I just realized I haven't sent you the list yet, but yeah. I, I will remind me. Okay. Uh, and and, and uh, when you have those different aspects, it trains the brain to go into a space where you are ready and receptive to, uh, to form new knowledge and new neural connections in the brain. Yeah. And it makes it a permanent part of your habit thinking thing as well. So yeah, it's exciting. Do you know the chart from NASA? The chart from? NASA. NASA. Yeah, the one with the alphabet. You, For example, you have the alphabet, I'll, I'll send to you, you have the alphabet in a chart, yeah. and below the letters there is R for right, yes. L for left, and T for together. And then you say you have to say the alphabet moving your hands like A, B, uh, okay. C, D, right? And it's right. difficult. It's difficult. Right. But, uh, and then you and then you can do it from Z to A and so on. And then I I, I do this with my students. Why? Because it's the same state you get after this exercise. You get alert, creative creative mm -hmm. creative focused mm -hmm. and you get a good feeling on your body so first i do the nasa chart and then i do the b-i-n-g-o or the loop t loop and then Thank i you, after yes. i ask them to sit and close their eyes their eyes and to pay attention to the sensation on their bodies it's exactly the same effect of the nasa chart that you have with loop to loop or B-I-N-G-O? When did you learn this? What year? What, NASA chart? No, no, all, all this, the songs, uh, the B-I-N-G-O, loop to loop. Ah, da, da, da. because I was, I was, uh, uh, I, I used to work with children, right? 20 years ago, I started with babies and then three and four year old children. Okay, so, it wasn't it wasn't part of the whole suggestology suggestopedia thing then, and I thought I was the one introducing those songs to them in Bulgaria, and they were using other things at that time. So I was curious to know. So you incorporated into your thinking uh -huh. and your yeah. teaching. I see, yeah. I see. Very cool. Very yeah, cool. Yeah, you know, once I had a, a student, a senior, and he arrived. And he looked at me and he said, this is the last English course that I'm taking. If this doesn't work, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm giving up learning English. He said, yeah. okay. That's what we and say then, about re relationships as well. This is the last relationship I'm going to get <laughs> into. If it doesn't work, they're still looking. They're still looking. And then at the end of the class, I did the loop to loop. You know, look to look. Uh -huh. uh, yes, yes, of course. Right hand look, in, look. out, shake, 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 turn yes, everybody yes, around, and then look. Here we go, loop the loop. Here we yeah, go, loop. That's the that's one. The, that's an go, American thing, yes. And then when, when the song started and I started dancing with the group, he was looking at me like, oh, like, what am I doing here? And he was with his arms crossed like this, you know? And yes. then I, I couldn't take him because I was a teacher there and I was playing and I want him to do the movement, you know? Yes. And then someone just grabbed him and he entered the loop to loop and after finished, he looked at me and he said, if my wife imagines that I am coming here to dance, I'm in big trouble, but I like this. <laughs> 
very good. Let's let's not tell his wife. She sounds like the adult. So <laughs> what what I what I tried to incorporate, Mel, was yeah. uh, are some more techniques to get to that stage, uh, to that state of psycho relaxation, whatever name is. You know, the ideal state of creativity, focus, and happiness. Yeah, there, there are many names for that state, and some of them, uh, Dr. Lozano violently opposed the names when I started bringing that relaxed uh, wakefulness, uh, it's a wakeful hypnotic trance, uh, da 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 da, uh, induced relaxation, uh, induced by what? By suggestion, and uh, so on and so forth. Well, because, because he was he didn't want it to be labeled and and put mm -hmm. like that so yes. we we had as much as we got along we also had a lot of fights verbal uh, da -da -da -da. yeah 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 so when he makes up his mind it's very difficult to change it uh, but you know when when i looked for 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 suggestopedia what i was looking was a teaching way of the where my students could learn exactly the same way as the children I used to work with. That's why mm -hmm. I looked for Suggestopedia because I was frustrated in the traditional market for English teaching, you know. Mm -hmm. The students came to classroom and they needed a teacher to write the homework on the on the board because they didn't have time for to do it. So this was too boring for me. I, I had no results in the class. And I said, no, this, I don't, I don't want to do this anymore. Mm -hmm. I said, I, there must be a method that people can be happy in the classroom, playing, yeah. having fun, as I used to have with the little children. That's why I looked sure, for Suggestopedia. Sure. It's all about fun. It's about having fun in the classroom. Tell us and, more about these laws. And one more thing about the the... The, the, it's a lot of content, right? But another thing about the freedom is the role playing that we we have, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so usually the first day of class, people get a name tag with a different name, and the topic about the the material that I've developed is a congress that happens in in Canada, and we are the participants of the congress. So I am Miss Virginia, the other ladies, Miss Rose, Mr. Zachary, you know. So you get away. It's another way of getting away from your limitations, the role playing. Mm -hmm. And also to create intonation and everything, because then you are playing a role. And then I always tell them, oh, feel free to change your voice. And then they say, ah. I said, okay, today I need a volunteer. Oh, it's a man. Oh, ah, it's a man. Okay, no problem. Who wants to do it? It's not about sexuality here. It's about flexibility. So, oh, change your voice. Oh, I can't change my voice. Do this. I don't need to do this. I can do it without blinding my nose, right? Mm -hmm. Because when you change your voice, you're so focused on making the voice that you're free to speak then I know exactly where you need help with your pronunciation. Yeah. Sometimes when the person changes the voice, it simply flows, you know, because you're not worried about reading. You're not worrying about speaking right. You're focusing on making a different voice. It's fantastic. Fantastic. Right, right. So role playing is also related to freedom, okay? Uh, the third law, so love, freedom, right? If you feel that you are accepted, you are free to express yourself and you are free to learn. And then the third law, conviction. There is another word, big, big explanation for this law. I summarized it as conviction because then you feel confident about yourself. Wow, it's possible for me here. I can do it. This is what the third law is about, you know. You are you are accepted, you are free to learn, and when you are free to learn, the learning happens. 
happens, right? So then you get a conviction. Ah, it's possible. I can do it. It's okay if I make mistakes. And you start giving up some beliefs you have about yourself. Maybe That's the word true. that best fits that is that you see the possibility of, uh, of, of really learning. Because people, a lot of people say, I cannot learn languages. It's very difficult for me. I can't say this. I can't I give up halfway. Uh, conviction, yes, it's not wrong, but uh, possibility. When you see the possibility, then you are convinced, which is not conviction, but you are convinced that it's possible. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know a short word for that. If any of you are listening to this program right now, yeah. I know a short word that means convinced that it's possible. One word well, that, Professor that Lozanov says. used to say, uh, sure. When he when he used that word, for me, the sky opened, you know? Sure. 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 S-U-R-E. Yeah. So uh -huh. when Professor Lozanov says, I'm sure, you're, for me, the sky opens, you know? He told me that okay. about my transplant when I told him that I need a transplant. And then he's and then I, I said, I would like you to be with me in my my during my transplant. And then he said, I'll be there. I said, How? He said, be sure I'll be there. And of course, right? In a way he yes, was. Yes, yes. Can yes. I make a three minute exercise? about belief and limitation yes yes did you want to answer a couple of questions before you did that sure 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 uh thing uh gave us a joke and thing we will we will we will read the joke later we wanted something relevant to what we were talking about but she brings up a good point that maybe jokes and joking in classroom is also quite brings back the joyful experience don't you agree yeah, yeah, I I don't I'm not very good at jokes, you know. So I only know two or three jokes, but I I tell those two or three jokes that I know. This is this is where conviction comes in. And Chris yeah. says, Is it not true that Halloween Halloween is for children and adults to express their inner psychological suppression? Could be a good theory. Uh, in Brazil, there is carnival. <laughs> carnival. When is that? Carnival. And um, end of February, beginning of March. Every year mm. is is a little bit different, but it's one day, yeah. one day you're gonna see me there. Yeah, it's four. It's sometimes it's a whole week of party here. Hey, it's been a while since I did a whole week of party. Uh, I never did, but um, uh, dressing up in Halloween is a chance for people to express that other side of themselves it's not just about ghosts and about all souls day it's more about um the ability to take on a persona another persona which is why avatars work really well in yeah. games and that's why games are so powerful because the avatar that you represent defeats the enemy which is created by the computer Blah, 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 blah. Lara, how do you say the last name? Safar? Safar? Safar. Safar. Says one is love, two is freedom, three is conviction, convincing, sure, assurance. Wonderful. And four? Oh, oh, you, no, exercise. Let's do the exercise. It's a very simple and fast exercise. You just close your eyes a little bit, connect to yourself. Take a deep breath. Close my eyes a little bit or a lot? Ah, uh, what? Close my eyes a little bit or a lot? No, a lot. Close your eyes. <laughs> For a little bit. For a little okay. bit. Okay. You close your eyes. Connect to yourself. Take a deep breath. And I would like you to imagine beside you a trash can. And I'll make you some questions. What keeps you from being healthy?
and everything that keeps you from being healthy, conscious or not, goes to that trash. What keeps you from having plenty of money? And everything that keeps you from having plenty of money, conscious or not, goes to that trash can. What keeps you from doing what you love? And everything that keeps you from doing what you love, conscious or not, goes to that trash. What keeps you from loving and being loved? And everything that keeps you from loving and being loved, conscious or not, goes to that trash can. What keeps you from learning other languages? And everything that keeps you from learning other languages, conscious or not, goes to that trash. What keeps you from traveling around the world? And everything that keeps you from traveling around the world, conscious or not, goes to the trash can. What keeps you from dreaming without limits? And what keeps you from dreaming without limits? conscious or not, goes to that trash. What keeps you from being free? And everything that keeps you from being free, conscious or not, goes to that trash. What keeps you from being yourself? And everything that keeps you from being yourself, conscious or not, goes to the trash. And then you take a deep breath and you look at that trash can. Maybe you can set fire on everything that is there or you can take it outside so the garbage man can take it away. You do whatever you want with this. But be sure that everything that it is in there, you don't need it anymore. And then maybe you can Repeat to yourself, I can, I want it, and I deserve, because I am. And then you can open your eyes and come back here. Cleaning up time. I need a bigger trash can. So maybe you can leave it there and throw things there during the day. Oh, no, I, I have a very big garden. So I compost a lot of this stuff. So a good idea too. So new plants grow. Um, interesting. Thank you. And, and what does this exercise? Uh, mm, what, what's the point of the exercise? Yeah, thank you. To, to... Most of my stuff is in the garbage, so I couldn't talk. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, because Guess. of the conviction, right? 
some people stay so attached to the limitations and beliefs and sometimes it's good to look inside and see that some things you don't need anymore and you can put it away mm, yes so the the, the the uh, so that you can clear yourself of possibilities and possibility of learning new languages or new information yes excuse me i like that very good thank you fourth law yes ma'am access to large amounts of information so if you are not judged you are free you are convicted mel what word would we use now convinced 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 that you can right yeah totally Out convinced automatically your mind expands and you are you can learn more in less time in uh In, in Suggestopedia, we work with a whole lot of content in a short period of time. And yes. like people don't feel like a burden, you know, just Correct. this just flows because it's the way that we work. It, it becomes not part of a knowledge base, but it becomes part of a habit base. And the habit base is what you execute on a daily level. Eljana. Nikolova from Bulgaria says, really cool. Thank you, Lucia. She's now about to give birth to her third child. Oh, and, uh, yes. How nice. And How uh, she's, yeah, she lives in the old capital city of Bulgaria called Veliko Ternovo. Very beautiful, beautiful place. And uh, she's not going to stop making babies until she has a basketball team. <laughs> <laughs> I have three, so I can't say anything. Ah, yes, there you go. Yeah. There you go. But three. No, no babies anymore. My children are 27, 21, and 19. Well, there you go. Already yeah. adults. Yes, I have. Good. I, yeah, yeah. I have two that I know about. Uh, one has been <laughs> to, I asked him to get a hold of you, but he was so busy. Um, my son was in uh, uh, Brazil last year. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, he had a Brazilian girlfriend. Da da da. He learned Portuguese, uh, and and he was he's very good. And if he was on tonight, uh, he was busy doing a few things. And but if he was on tonight, he could probably speak to you in Portuguese. Wow! But yeah, yeah. Uh, I think this is a good way of learning a language too, right? Yes, it's called learning by immersion. Having her girlfriend. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yes, I had dope, a student but... that she was dating a guy from. Hi, what's the name? Tunisia. Tunisia. Yes. And she was dating a guy from Tunisia. And then she came to my class to learn English to speak with him. But his English is not exactly English. And now yeah. he's living here in Brazil. I speak English with him. He understands what I say, but he, he uses a totally different language. So she, she looks at him and she said, eh, do you want... Uh, chiki, chiki, chiki is food, right? And then I yes. said, Mari, why are you speaking like that? This is wrong. And she said, I know this is wrong, but this is the way he understands. So they created their own language. Mm -hmm. It's called, when, when you create your own language, it's called pigeon, pigeon English. When you pigeon create, English. yeah, you create Very elements of everything, like in the south uh, of the United States, in Louisiana and parts thereof. They have they speak a language called Creole, which is a mixture of English and, yeah. and some French and some other elements mixed in. So you got to be from the south to be able to know in the bayou where they where they uh, live and work and uh, raise families. So we are on the fourth law, and the law was yeah. the law was access to large amounts of information. Right when there is a mind expansion. Right. Because you're, you're you, ready to receive. You're ready to receive. And the right. fifth law is global, partial, partial, global, partial through global. No, 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 no. Okay. What I understand about, because, you know, when you read a book and when you read the book, it's very, the explanation is not so clear. 
So what I understand here is like different from the traditional teaching of a diff of a second language. You don't go like by verb to be and then present continuous, do and does, right? You start mm -hmm. with a whole dialogue because it's impossible for you to to speak with only verb to be. So you start right. with the language and then you start to understand it into chunks, you know? Mm, okay. And the other thing is like those chunks, they are always connected to something bigger. So what I understand, it's like the same in life. We are mm -hmm. part of many systems. Mm -hmm. So what I feel about the law, this law is more than technical thing, uh, speaking here now, like grammar. We're not talking about grammar. I understand that this law is like you get the sense that you are part of the whole and you mm -hmm. are important for the whole. And also you need the whole to survive. This is what I understand. Because the laws of, of teaching go way beyond technical thinking here, right? Sure. We're not talking about technical thing here. No. These laws are very, very deep in meaning. And what I understand by global partial, partial global, whatever, it's like systemic vision. You understand that you are part of many systems and you are important in many systems. And like the not more important in one than in the other. You are important because you are part of something, right? Mm -hmm. Something larger something larger yes then you feel connected to the whole sure and this is so in this, other words this is related to belonging right mel that's a big uh, yes, issue yes. or application because whatever you learn in that language program let's say it's portuguese or english and you learn it within a context a local context which means the classroom and from your classmates and from your teacher who's present at the moment. But then when you look at the application, you see that you're going to use that language, not just for fun, in mm -hmm. your business. You're going to use it in traveling when you become a tourist and going around. So you see global applications beyond the classroom. You see how it affects your life and the, the segments of your life. Because at that point, new knowledge becomes available to you in that language you're learning. Uh, including religion, uh, spiritual stuff, uh, physical body, other things that you you before was stuck in, say, a particular language. Now you can multi multi fair. You can go out and use it all in a in a global context, and it's very useful. So yes, it it, it helps you to impress that knowledge into your head. So yeah, yeah because... wonderful. It expands the vision, right? Sometimes we have a very mm -hmm. limited vision of not only the grammar, but of life. Mm -hmm. And here also says uh, the unity of conscious and unconscious. Mm -hmm. So at that mm -hmm. point, after you go, you, you've you gone through the whole process until now, right? Love, yes. freedom, conviction, and a lot, uh, lot of content, right? There yeah. is a junction of what I know and what I don't know. Yes, you, you see, conscious. That, that's true, conscious. because it, to, to put it simply, a teacher must actually teach uh, a subject by relating it to knowledge that the student already has, is understood by the students. Uh, the unknown must be explained by the known. Agreed? So what yes. the student knows, then they apply it to a global context. You know, I remember my second grade teacher many years ago uh, bringing pies, you know, little cakes to school to introduce the subject of fractions uh, in mathematics because we, we didn't understand. And it was one of the best math lessons I ever had. And oh, yeah, I still delicious. remember <laughs> till today because mostly because I, I, I love sweet things, you know, which you can see. And so mm -hmm. in reality, it was because this teacher successfully followed this global, local, local, global, way of teaching us something new by using something that we already knew about and and love and combining it with rules, numbers, 
two, I cut it into half, this is a half. I cut it into a quarter, this is a quarter. I cut it into an eighth, this is an eighth. And so it's stuck in our brains. So that's what uh -huh. I think that means, yeah. Uh, when, I, when I had, uh, during my classes now online, this is impossible, but I used to make pancakes for them with syrup. Oh, wow. Yeah, and homemade maple, pancakes. Maple, yeah, maple syrup. syrup maple syrup and brownies and everything that was related to the dialogues that i wrote right what are you doing it for yes. me it's the middle of the night now where do i find brownies and maple syrup okay <laughs> <laughs> and this was so good and this yeah. is something that we are adapting on the online now yeah. because then we have to set up that the students have something with them and then we have like a snack time together and yeah to taste things yeah okay so, cool. so where are we uh, uh law number freedom. five oh lara lara is lara is helping me a lot like right lara mm -hmm. love freedom conviction conviction lots lots of content ah mm -hmm. yeah now mm -hmm. the sixth mm -hmm. law and for me the most beautiful gold proportion what? Gold proportion, golden ratio. Oh, golden, golden ratio. Okay, yes. Golden ratio. Yeah, mm -hmm. in Portuguese, a uh, golden proportion. Mm -hmm. A golden ratio, and then this this topic burned my brain. You know, because nothing is metrical in the method. Mm -hmm. You are free. Sometimes, uh, sometimes I shouldn't brings something to the content to the content and you explore that and then i say we start having breakfast suddenly we are mil milking the, milking the cow and then after two minutes we are in an office so what where is the metric right and you brought the cow about... to the you brought the cow to the office again <laughs> yeah you <laughs> okay. know it's crazy and then i was uh -huh. burning my brain with that and then Teachers started me ask, uh, started asking me like, "Oh, is there a, a, a perfect setting for the classroom because of this?" And then I said, "No." And then one night I was thinking about that, and for me, this law is mm. the law of belonging. You know mm -hmm. that each one of us is perfect exactly the way we are in our differences this is what i understand for this law mm. maybe i'm wrong maybe there is a lot of theory behind this but mm -hmm. i've burned my head thinking about this law and at some point i thought no it, it is deeper than this it's like at some point you feel that beyond your limitations your beliefs you are special and you are different and you are there. So the golden ratio, ratio eh, talks about proportion and perfection. And I believe I'm perfect as much as you are. Yeah. Um, Am I too crazy, Mel? <laughs> you are looking no, like, like, no, no, what, I, is, I, what, like I, what is this woman saying here in this show? Mel, because you know I studied by myself and it's yeah. a whole lot of material. No, I, I and, love and, the and way and I you had I, I I I I thought like if I were Professor Lozanov now, what was the message? Because this law burnt my brain. Mm -hmm. And then and then I saw him in front of me like you are really great and then said, that's it you know i am great he's great everybody because beyond our differences yeah we are perfect the the teacher's personality true personality must come out and be natural uh because learning is a habit forming and if we were to put the golden ratio in any form uh, example if we want to learn a new skill you know such as learning to play the piano or a language or a karate lesson or science or whatever um, it's practice that makes perfect so eventually the practice must become a habit 
and to learn a new skill like a language or an ability to express in different terms, you must set aside time every day to dedicate to it. So with new subjects come growth and the growth doesn't come uh, expansive like that from one from A, then B, then C, then D. Sometimes it's, it's very global like you were talking about before. It just simply goes from A to Z and then back to B and then up to that to T or to, to and, and so it follows a law that is beyond comprehension, the golden ratio, if you will. And it's natural because you find the Fibonacci series in everything in nature, almost everything in nature, right down to uh, water when it's, when you know, you take water, for instance, mm -hmm. and you freeze it down into its uh, uh, crystal uh, uh, state, it starts to form six-sided crystals. It, how does it know to do that? Whatever state, whatever form, depends on the influence also to decide the shape of the molecule, but the general idea is the same. So I think that's what he means by the golden ratio. The mind knows as much as it needs how to incorporate everything into the habits and the way of life and the application and then the growth thereof. And then so it follows the, the series, you know, and, and, and uh, it's very important. So there is a sacredness mm -hmm. about this. You know who else actually thought this and knew this and applied it in resonance? Nikola Tesla. He actually applied a resonant frequency, he says, was based on this uh, this golden ratio, the, the Fibonacci series, and in ascending and descending tones, uh, but you can barely hear them because they're outside the spectrum of sound. Mm -hmm. And he embedded it, this machinery, if you will, into the walls of a class in New York City, uh, a school in New York City. And, uh, and he turned on his device and within a month or two, there was, there was a huge difference in the way students felt and teachers felt uh, and, and what they were learning and the accelerated growth was phenomenal. And the brain was uh, changing in its state, but we never had, um, we assumed that because we never had uh, uh, proper machines like MRIs and all of that to measure what was actually happening in the brain. So you can only conjecture, maybe. But Professor Lozanov ha ha has done these these studies, right? Yes. The measure but, of but, the brain and everything. Yeah, but but that's through uh, EEG machines. But those are not enough. Uh, they they only measure certain uh, waves that the brain uh, operated. projects. Uh, yeah, operated on. You can only measure them. Again, it was all not so. Um, mm, well, the, the it, it's not that it's not scientific. It was flawed in many ways because of the machines or lack of machines that we had. He even used these these EEGs to measure the brain waves of uh, Vanga Baba Vanga, who is the yeah. psychic, the general psychic of uh, of. Uh, uh, he was testing. He was testing her from start to finish, and they were very, very close friends. He was fascinated by the parapsychological uh, mm -hmm. stuff. And, and, and so we had a lot to talk about because I'm also into the powers of the mind and the abilities of the mind to do beyond what we think is, we're capable of doing. And uh, it creates positive hallucinations, negative hallucinations. I can create for you what is not there just by the power of suggestion. I can improve your abilities and all of that through the power of suggestion. I can give you a skill you never had, like drawing and painting and all of this, just for the power of suggestion. So it's quite amazing. You know, I have an example once uh, when I was in Vienna with Professor Lozanov. I had very strong headaches because of the intoxication of the body, right? Is that bird in your house or mine? Yes, I have three cockadio birds. They oh, they okay. talk. They talk. All right. <laughs> because Sorry. because out of out of the blue, uh, when my uh, audio engineer was here working with me, he said, "Do you have birds here?" And I heard the bird. I said, "No, they're not supposed to be in the studio." What the hell? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. They they are really fun. They talk and everything. And yeah. this is a proof that oh, mine mine is like mom. 
yes, because yes. he's listening my voice. I see. This um, is a proof of uh, of the love, right? Mm -hmm. Animals, they develop. My opinion, right? Animals yeah. develop everything that they are capable of when they are loved. Mm -hmm. I see it by my birds. Like my bird, I do this. Nikki Vey, he comes here, and I have never give. I have never given him like a. Uh, food as yeah. a as a as an award you know mm -hmm. he comes because he likes me wow. and they speak they sing and they learn as much as they can when they are loved this is what wow. i believe uh are your birds oh. in a cage or are they free no they're free i live in the cage and they live in an apartment <laughs> because i have i have nets on the windows Oh, I see. Call I one have... to you now. Call one to you now. Let's see if I can take one. All right. Wow, this is so wonderful. And while you're doing that, let me read some of the... Uh... Oh, she's not on, so she can't hear me. She's... <laughs> Oh, they are in a cage. Wow. Now watch. If she has the window open, it's my fault now if it goes. The cleaning lady is here, so so he was still in the cage because they sleep in the cage. They okay, sleep in the cage. And she's making noise and sorry, so she I forgot. Oh sorry. So so the, the cleaning lady disturbed her? No, no, he, she, uh, because she cleans outside where they stay. They they have uh, a whole ba balcony for them, so oh, the wings are not cut. Oh wow, they can fly! Yes, well, this beautiful and they're bird. Free here. Oh yes, this one he says leleki leleki leleki. Leleki is like a kind of funk music. Yes, he he whistles the national anthem, and he he sings. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Do -do -do -do, Adam's family. <laughs> and then in the morning I say I ask him, who who are you? And he says, Nikiro. Nikiro is the other one, but he believes oh, that he is Nikito. That he is Nikito. Can he can he sing now? Let's see. Ah leleki leki 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 leki. Você. Você. <laughs> ah leleki leki 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 leki. Você. What's it? No. No, you're not gonna sing. You're not on demand anyway. Mm. And this, this one, this is the way I communicate with them since they're babies. This. Wow. So when he does this, it's because he wants to please me. The because the since they're babies, yes, this is yes, the only yes. no I, this is the only thing I know how to whistle because I, I couldn't whistle be before them. Yeah. So this is what I learned how to whistle. So when the way to communicate with me is with this whistling. If you're just tuning in, we're at the second hour of the show on Common Sense, and we're talking to Lucia Carla Zornik, who is a suggestive pedia teacher, ah, language teacher. Like, she like, doesn't like, just train like, people. Like. She trains animals as well, and more in particular birds. <laughs> and hey, the, 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 the message is simple, people. If a bird can do it, why can't you? So it's as simple as that. <laughs> no, Cristal, uh, you are famous, eh? Merlin, uh, well, Cristal, pay attention. Uh, oh, she cannot hear me. That's right. I just realized that. I'll uh, just put him outside. Otherwise, he can chew my earphone. Oh, he does, huh? Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. My uh, my children do that without the bird. So do I? I'm in quandary. Do I read these messages yeah. when she's here? Do I not? Uh, maybe I'll wait for her to come back. And uh, in the meanwhile, I'll answer a question, Chris. Uh, reliability. The word is not reliability. Accuracy is more specific for lie detectors. Lie detectors are now so advanced that people are able to use it 
to measure not just uh, what you say and how your body responds with the galvanic skin responses that are always put in your, on your body to measure uh, the amount of electricity you exude, the breathing rate, uh, the heart rate and everything else. But also at the same time, Chris, they're paying attention to the, to the stress in your voice as well and, and uh, uh, how much of the truth you're telling. Uh, if you're studying things like NLP and you go into calibration skills and things like that, uh, some people who've been in the NLP field for at least 30 years, 20 years plus or more are able to calibrate accurately uh, to a degree. Again, not 100 percent. It's always like somewhere around 80 or 90 percent. And and that's enough for you not to point to someone and say, there, you're a liar and da, 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 da. No, just to listen, to know their intention so that you keep yourself safe. You don't have to respond to everybody who speaks to you. Uh, that you have to know. Um, so I hope you understand that. Lie detectors now are working on something way beyond that. Uh, DARPA is working on quote unquote lie detectors that can actually tell your thoughts. This is crazy. So what you're thinking at any one time, they can form a picture of. Uh, imagine that that's true. And that's a vital component for AI systems as well. I also learned a lot of the AI systems are being developed in other countries in the world, for instance, Singapore and all of this. Merlin says, uh, that is so true. I easily learn languages, for example, without pressure, uh, mother tongue Croatian, then Macedonian and Italian. I love you so much, Dr. Nell Gill. That's the other guy. I'm Mel. <laughs> love from Italo near Venice. Uh, love from Italy. Sorry for the error. Uh, Lawrence from Canada says, excellent program. Thing Mali One likes your bird. How many people have ever come up to you, uh, Lucia, and said, I like your bird? No one ever says that to me. <laughs> you know, maybe on my wedding night, but that's a different story. Lara <laughs> Safar says, that's nice to see you. And Chris says, I lie detectors an invasion of human rights privilege. Everything is an invasion of your human rights. Uh, welcome to planet Earth. Welcome to the state of technology. Welcome to social media. You are being invaded right now. Just sit and relax and enjoy it. It's a short ride. So we're in conversation with Lucia who, are we finished with the seven laws or? The last one, the last one is art. Art. Uh, because we know that when we look at a painting, for example, mm -hmm. it's like the peripheral perceptions to that Professor Lozanov talks about, right? Because there is periphery. a lot of information in there. A lot that's of. In, that's information on the peripheral vision that you pick up with your eyes and with your ears. Uh, sounds you don't pay attention to. And sometimes when you put uh, information on the walls, uh, mm -hmm. lists, yes. maps, uh, diagrams, suggestions, other things, you don't have to point to them. The, the student picks it up. Uh, there seems to be like a 360 degree vision for a lot of happy students who pay attention to that. You want to break your students out of a tunnel vision that looks at the teacher and nothing else and uh, find a way to open them up, like uh, Lucia was saying, so that they want to experience the world and they get more curious. Yes. So uh, I was going to tell about Professor Lozanov the headache yes so i always had headaches and then i told him i said oh i have strong headaches and i take lots of medicine for that and then he said so today maybe instead of visiting the beautiful vienna you could stay at the hotel and rest and then I didn't pay a lot of attention and then I left his home. My mom was waiting for me with my daughter downtown and we walked until 10 p.m. because it gets dark later there, right, then in Brazil. And then I arrived at the hotel and I told my mom, I said, interesting, I didn't have a headache today. And then I said, oh, Professor Lozanov. <laughs> then next day I asked him, what have you done with my headache? And then he looked at me and he said, why do you want it back? Do you want it back? Yeah. 
similar and then I said no and then he said so does it matter <laughs> so he gave me two options right to stay at the yeah. hotel or to visit the beautiful Vienna but not having a headache wow how amazing interesting right well Very. so the last law is art music that we have already talked about right yeah. if we talk about music we can spend like hours talking about music because the effect of the music in the brain is something amazing even people with alzheimer when they i don't know if you have seen this video uh, video when they listen there is an old man and he can't recognize his daughter and then the, he listens to his favorite playlist when he was young. And then he, he changes totally his expression and he recognizes the daughter and he starts talking about when, uh, when he was, uh, when he got married about his wife mm -hmm. and everything. Mm -hmm. So that part of the brain doesn't get affected by the Alzheimer the part that process the music not that they can recover anything but they can be they can remember things for a little bit with music with music yeah it's a uh, it goes towards the understanding of the human mind and memory as a hologram and that that per perhaps mind is not brain centered that mind is uh, extra somo that means outside the body and so not or Deepak Chopra or Chopra and others like him and some neuroscientists would call it uh, non-local non-local consciousness so yeah. uh, and that consciousness is accessed through various different means most times through pictures and visual images other times through auditory images like in terms of sounds mm -hmm. you can mm -hmm. access it that way but again all for a very short period of time or well, most times it's kinesthetic it's a uh, touch smell taste mm -hmm. and that would bring the remembrance back again a lot of work is still being done and and i think a lot of people are working with mct coconut oil and uh, it seems to make all the difference in the world when people take a tablespoon of that in reversing alzheimer's symptoms uh oh, and uh whether it's a cure or not we do not know we are in conversation. We are coming to the close of the program. We're in conversation with Lucia Carla Zornik from Brazil. She's an NLP trainer, teacher. She's a therapist as well, uh, of sorts, accidentally. And she's uh, she's uh, she does that by opening people's hearts and minds uh, with these seven laws that she's uh, teaching us about. It's about the seven laws of Professor Giorgi Lozanov, Suggestopedia, and if you were to apply it a little bit differently, there are also seven laws of learning at the same time. And uh, they're also applied to this way. Look out for the book. That's something that she's going to be putting together soon. <laughs> I put you in this spot. <laughs> so you're going to have to write about that. My experience with the great Professor Lozano. How about that? Yeah. Uh, I hope I could send the the message sometimes i feel that i am not there yet you know to represent mm -hmm. everything that i got from professor lozanov but i hope i could do a little bit i i hope that i did a little bit today and you could get the message because i think that professor lozanov's work goes way beyond laws and and technical stuff you know it's yeah it's something that you need the laws of suggestopedia is what you have inside your heart to give to the other person right yes and correct. how much open openness you have to receive from other people too sure absolutely do do you think i can share a a little video to summarize this it's a youtube video how would you oh you could put I, the i have here share screen can i try it if it doesn't try work it. okay try it try it mm -hmm. 
and 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 now let me let me put it up oh oh i i thought i have it here but you do it's right here do you want me to put it up for a while or not put it up yet let's see uh, i'll wait for you for you to get it ready and let me know when you're ready and i'll put it up so that we we don't see all the naked pictures and stuff <laughs> now ready you're ready okay good yeah you may want to expand it a bit and you know we don't have sound right oh uh, no i don't believe really yes uh but it's okay it's okay sure yeah. you can explain no no you cannot okay good I love the graphics. Mm -hmm. Maybe while we're, oh, I've seen this. Uh, but, but, but perhaps you could paste the URL for this what as well it? so people can watch yeah, on their own sure. later. Uh -huh. But let's watch it anyway. It's seven minutes long. Sure. No, no, it, we have time. I remember this.
Look at the tree. Change color. Color. Oh, look this the shape of the tree. Mm-hmm. Love. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, I I had posted that a long, long time ago, maybe about eight years ago. It's it's that old, maybe older on uh at that time what well, was facebook to begin with my son i took him to singapore for a while to see what school was like because he was not doing so well in new york and uh so i wanted him to experience school here he was eight years old and here in this country they kill your creativity in schools you have to have your hair a certain way you have to have everything a certain way you have to look like everybody else in this you know uh, cookie cutter sort of making and they have pushed knowledge into you. He was be becoming depressed. It was one of the best schools in town. But because of my reputation, I kind of skipped the queue for students going in. So they brought him in. So they went a little bit beyond that. And uh, and the funny thing is, um, I, saw him, I saw him becoming depressed in this school. I thought, what the hell? At least in the States, he could play a lot. And, his, and listen to his mother scream and so on and so forth later. But um, um, so one day we went there and I saw the depression and the look on his face. This, this, this little movie reminded me of that. I took him out. I said, do you want to go to school today? He said, no. I said, okay, let's go watch a movie. So we went to a movie theater not too far from there. I canceled all my appointments and everything. And we just sat there and watched a movie at 10 o'clock in the morning. Can you imagine? We had to have a de decent breakfast, so there was McDonald's and all of that kind of stuff. And so we just, and then I explained to the principal, I said, I think I'm going to send him back to the States because he's not going to make it here. It's going to be very difficult. So it was very tough. Let's read what some of the people, thank you for sharing. I really appreciate it. Um, this summarizes what Suggestopedia is. Sure, absolutely. Um, Chris is asking for the URL. We'll post it here. Uh, what would be the topic of Wednesday next? Thanks a lot for helping mankind. That's for you. Thank you for helping man and womankind uh, everywhere and childkind in the world. Uh, Joycelyn says she's seen this video before. Chris watches under what category group this type of clips fall under? Education, children, etc., etc. Oh, love. Oh, there you go. Love. All of the above. Uh, love is a cartoon anyway, so it's similar. Yeah. <laughs> what do I type in the search bar? Okay, I go beyond that. Z Zoja says, Dear Dr. Mil, I'm Mil now. I live between Italy, Croatia, and Macedonia. I love the world and all countries of my home. I hope to meet him after the virus. Who is him? Oh, me. Okay, mm -hmm. yes, let's meet. Uh, my home is Singapore. Chicago sometimes, um, although I'll be spending less time there, more time in Bulgaria uh, where nobody ever comes. So it's always a great place for me to sit down and write. Uh, in life, it also takes courage. Not being afraid is the strongest weapon. I'm not scared of almost nothing. 
oh well wait till you uh get into a relationship the fear rises then <laughs> i just kidding i don't know <laughs> uh lucia we are coming to the close of the program it's been two hours spent so wonderfully with you i really appreciate uh this time um, I hope I've together met your expectations Oh, it doesn't I matter. Hope you understand no, I understand my interpretations. <laughs> I have I have zero expectations, and you've gone beyond my expectations just by being here and present and listening to you and talking about what you feel and what you know. And what makes it even better, while we were watching that clip, even though there was no sound, we could hear you sniffing. And crying, <laughs> and crying, I, and so that's enough. You know? That that's enough. Yes, it shows. Because that 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 video summarizes the the yes. real meaning of yes. suggestopedia. You know, like yes, yes, yes. Sometimes you, parents are so focused on intelligence on and forget about love, right? Yes, and in a beautiful way, you are that person where I went in a movie theater, I always sit in the front and nobody <laughs> ever sits there, but I'm the one in the front and and I sit there, but you're the person that through the quiet, sad scenes, you're the person I can hear sniffling all the time in the back. <laughs> yeah, <it's my> <laughs> so you reminded me of that a little bit. Oh, well, thank you so much, Mel, for the opportunity once again and folks that Thank you for your attention here and being with well, us. Let's talk about you coming back and, and maybe uh, something that I just went off the cuff thinking just now. We can You can tell me if it's a good idea, not a good idea. You teach uh, Brazilians English. Mm -hmm. You teach uh, people who speak English Brazilian or Portuguese. Do you teach people? Do you teach me? Like, say, if I came to you, can you teach me Portuguese? If I can teach you Portuguese, yeah, <laughs> yeah sure, I can. It's the you opposite start, way. Go. You want to start lessons on Wednesday? Oh, sure. Why not? Lesson one for uh, an hour is an hour enough. Is an hour enough to teach you Portuguese? Uh, no, and yeah. then and then lesson two will be next one, then lesson three, lesson four, okay, lesson five. Sure. So yeah, everybody will learn. So yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, sure. One or two a hours you decide. Maybe. You decide a challenge, it'll be fun. Yeah. And okay. and I'm I'm gonna hold you to it because then people can visit Portugal, which is a good place for everyone to visit. The yeah, the Portuguese yeah. is different, yeah. And a also bit. a little bit, yeah. And so at the same time, uh they can take up the challenge by reading my book in Portuguese. How about that? That'll be sure. it. Or, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I can I can impress my aunt by talking to her in Portuguese. Almondega. By the way, your <laughs> book is not available here. Really? Unfortunately, okay, I'll, I'll, in the I'll, Portuguese version, no. Through Amazon, uh, we can get the Spanish and English version. But I will I will send you, I will send you the name of my publisher and uh, I think I don't know it's been 10 years right since it came out so uh, let's see maybe I haven't uh, uh, renewed my contract with them it only lasts for five or seven years so let's republish it if it's not yeah. there but who knows it might republish it through you Olá, muito obrigado Almondega for you oh. I'm not going for me, muito yes. Obrigado. Muito obrigado. I'm looking forward. Next week, uh, if you're tuning in, Lucia is going to be teaching us Portuguese, and we'll start with that lesson, see how it goes, and goes on to the next, and the next, and every day on Wednesday will be language day. Okay. So we great. learn the, the solid stuff. It'll be fun for you, too. Sure, for sure. I will love it. Yes, yes, and I want to learn. So <laughs> I'll, I'll be asking a lot of questions. Cool. Thank you so much, folks. And if you could Have give everyone, weekend. if you can give everyone some advice for the weekend, uh, so we can close, and and that would be very very cool. If you still need to use your trash can, here I don't know there, but here is a long weekend, so right. you have three long days. 
to finish using your trash can, right? And, uh, and if, if you don't know what the questions were, please rewind this program a little bit. And Lucia ran us through a, a uh, exercise, 15 minute exercise, and you'll get the questions again. And of course you can extend the question to other areas of your life. Uh, if you want a better relationship with your husband, with your wife, or somebody else's husband or wife, what's stopping you? And so on and so forth. So that, so on and so forth. That trash can is going to need to be much bigger. Mm -hmm. Lots Lucia. of homework for you. <laughs> Lucia, oh, yeah. thank you so much. Love you so thank much. You, and thank you for being part of this. Bye-bye, bye, folks. So that brings us to the close of Uncommon Sense. And uh, when Lucia was talking about stories and she was talking about how we would uh, be able to be more enthusiastic as we were when we were children, we remember all the songs and all the fairy tales. B-I-N-G-O, Bingo was his name the spider goes up the the water spout and so on and so forth i remember scout uh scouting exercises with my father who was a who was in his day a a um, big hoo-ha in, in in uh in the cub scouts he was uh the leader there's a word for it and i can't remember and we would sing all these songs around the campfire I remember listening to stories as well. And uh, one story in particular that I remember was about the mermaid. I think it was uh, W.B. Yeats, uh, the poet who said, a mermaid had found a swimming lad and picked him for her own, pressed her body to his body and laughed and plunging down, forgot in cruel happiness that even lovers can drown. So. In connecting with people, whether to languages or as a teacher to a student or a student to a teacher, because we are all teachers to each other and we're all students of each other. We want very badly to share our innermost experiences with all of our loved ones. But very often, like the mermaid, we, we forget that not everyone can go where we go. And so indeed, we all share this mysterious fact that no one else can go into our depths completely, into our minds completely, into our knowledge completely. That sometimes we have to trust a teacher, a voice within, a voice of reason that says to us, we do this and this happens. We do that and that happens. But we must travel to all of these places alone. It is where we commune with the great God force. See this this lad that uh, W. B. Yeats was talking about can visit the mermaid's depth, but he can't live there, or he will drown. And the mermaid can visit the lad's life on the land, but he can't stay there, or she will suffocate. We must each of us return to our innermost element in order to survive. And frequently, we judge each other not for coming along or even taking such an inability as rejection, when in fact we are kept out of our native element too long. And if we are, well, we will suffocate or we will drown. The living terrain of relationships actually exists in the overlap of our innermost natures. The mermaid and lad they return to embrace where the deep and the air begin to meet. It is the mermaid's responsibility of love to bring her treasures to the surface where they can be shared. And it's the lad's obligation to rinse his treasures in their common surf. So in this way, every authentic relationship becomes a home where we return from our solitary communions with God and go back again into the void and go back again again and again to the source of our love never was this very clearer to me than wheeling a friend of mine for many years he had been a friend to the operating theater where where she would have surgery 
multiple cancer. This was way back in Seattle. I went as far as I could and watched her grow smaller through these glass doors. I realized then that whether it be our quarrel with God or with dead parents or with the limitations of our humanity, that each of us must go beyond the glass doors of our experience alone. And the work of compassion, well, that's to guide our dear ones as far as we can and to be there when they return. But no one can go beyond these glass doors for us or with us on land or at sea, entangled in community or independent in isolation. We all share this essential aloneness. And in the journey between the depths and the heights that nourish our souls and the touch of others that keeps us sane, we are humbled into this miracle of love, which shows itself at every corner, which shows itself with every teacher that emerges in our life to teach us something that we don't yet know we love, that we're not capable of realizing the outcomes of. So how can you be hesitant when you are excited about learning and going from place to place and learning so much that you deserve to experience all of it in pure abundance? Hey, what's the worst that can happen? We're going to die anyway. So when you wake up in the morning tomorrow, recognize this, that you've been given one extra day on this glorious planet and have as much fun as possible because next week, people, next week, we will begin to learn Portuguese. How fun will that be? You've been listening to Uncommon Sense and the voice of Dr. Mel Gill. We will talk again next Wednesday where we begin our first Portuguese lesson from Lucia Carlo Carla uh, Zorni. In the meanwhile, have yourself a beautiful weekend. Wake up with an air of gratitude and you'd be surprised what the day will be like. Thank you for listening. Good night.